In this third video about feedback decoders, we're going to use the S88-60881 together with the Central Station 3 Plus. The decoder looks similar to the Link S88, except it only has two ports on the top. And again on the bottom, the 16 outputs and the two grounds. Remember the ground is the inverted T on the far left and on the far right. Unlike the Link S88, this S88 does not need a power supply, so there's no place to plug in power. And we're going to use the network cable that comes with the S88. It's a blue cable. And if you look at the two little arrows by each port, we're going to use the one on the left with the arrow that points to the outside, meaning the output of the S88. And that's what's going to be connected to the central station. The advantage of the central station 3 plus is that it does not need to link S88. It has a port built in for the S88 and it can hook up directly here on the bottom in this port. All you got to do is clip it in place. And that's all there is to that. And now it's time to go ahead and connect the power and power up the uh, CS3 Plus. So the CS3 Plus can take the 60881 feedback decoder. The CS3 needs to use the Link S88, the 6883, because it needs a separate power supply. The CS3 Plus has the power supply for the S88 already built in. First thing to do after startup is to go to System and then go scroll down to TFP3 and click on it to check. And you should see uh, most likely the same you see here, GFP3-1. And then what you need to do is scroll down on the screen and go to settings, which you will see on the bottom, click on it and then keep scrolling down. And you should not have to make any changes in what you see here. But the length of the S88 bus should be at least one, because you have one S88. If it's two or if it's five, that's fine, but it needs to be at least one. In our case, it's five. We're going to leave it. And these other values, the cycle time and the bit time, you should not have to mess with. So that's all set correctly, so we can get out of it. And we'll go to the edit mode. And we can add our contact tracks directly. You're going to see this window and the device in this case will be the central station itself so we select GFP3-1 because remember the S88 is hooked up directly to the central station. We're going to add contact tracks so I select that first and then click on the plus and there's my first contact track added in my list. The system names it K1 and again, you can name it whatever you would like it to be. But in this case, since we've been using K1 in our examples, I'll just leave it at K1. It's set at bus 1. That's our only option. The module is 1 because it's only one S88 that we have hooked up so far. And then it defaults to the first contact. And remember, there's 16 contacts on the S88. One works for me, so we'll just set it back to 1. Then finally on the right, you can make a switch to the other option, control and contacts, but we don't want to, so we're just going to leave it as is and add our second contact track by clicking on the plus. And the system calls it K2, still bus 1, module 1, and it puts it on the second spot, perfect for us. So we're set with this, and we can get out of the edit mode. Okay. Back to our track diagram, I'll pull it down just a little bit. And now we would like to put our contact tracks on our track board page. So we're going to edit the track board page. I grab it by that, the nine little points to pull this menu down because I don't really need it. So I'm pulling it out of the way. And now I'll drag down on the screen and I see my two contact tracks, K1 and K2. And I can pull them down and place them simply wherever I want them on the track. It's a little bit 
irrelevant in this example where they go, so I'll just put them in a random place. K1, and I'll put the K2 there. Again, we're not going for a, a specific scenario, so I'm just putting them somewhere on the track for now. Okay, that means uh, you can activate them right here with clicking on K1 or K2. I can do the same on the track diagram. And we're done with the edit mode. And now it's time to couple an event onto these contact tracks. So we click on events and here comes our new event. Let me pull this window down just a little bit. And I want this event to start when we run over contact track K1. So I pull that contact track K1 down. And raise this window just a little bit. And now I'll record. As you can see, the circle says zero. There's zero steps recorded. Now I'm clicking on this turnout and all that happens is the screen just jumps on me. But the, the turnout is not going here in the bottom in the to-do window. Uh, let's try it again. I'll click on it. Nope. I'll try to drag it down to the to-do window. Nothing happens. Hmm. Let me try the other turnout. I try to drag, click on it. Nothing happens. Ah, I'm still in the stop mode on the central station. And that's why it didn't work. So now I can simply click and click again and click and select a signal. And I got three events recorded, as you can see here in the record window, three. So three things will happen when that contact track K1 gets activated. I can name it to whatever I want to name it to. And because this is just a completely random example, we're not trying to go for a specific event, I'll just call it entry one. Okay, now I'm going to close this window and close the other one, but notice the edit is still active. And if you look on the top, the events, it still is in a green square and says three, because it's still in the edit mode. So I can make my changes here on the track diagram. I got my turnout set to green and my signal set to red, but I can click on my contact tracks and nothing happens. And that's because I never really got out of the edit mode. So you think it doesn't work, but there's a reason for it. See, there's the green square. So I'll look here on the bottom. That all looks correct. I closed this window by clicking on the close but I need to get out of the edit mode on this window up here and not just close it. So click on edit, get out of the edit mode and then close it. And now everything should work. So let's hit K1. Ah, now it works. And you can see it switches in short sequence, the W2, the W3, and then the signal. One, two, three. Now it's time to test it with our contact track. There's our S88 hooked up to the central station three. We got the ground wire running to the O marked on the track. And this piece here on the left is our contact track with our contact track wire. So I'm gonna connect that to the first port on the S88. Remember it's a screw terminal, no more plugs, okay. Let's put on the first port. Try to kind of put that wire up. And let's get our little card. I hope you can see the screen. The, the turnouts are set to green. And then watch that contact track in the bottom, the, the K1. And once I push the card on top of the contact track, you could see the sequence of events happening. Let me zoom in just a little bit. I'm gonna set the signal back to red and the two turnouts to green. And once I hit that contact track, it works. So in this video, we showed you how to hook up an S88 directly to the CS3 Plus and how to add contact tracks to the CS3 after the S88 was installed. Hopefully this was helpful to you and we'll see you next time. Thanks.